Hello, hello, welcome back, or I guess rather welcome us back. I don't think we've streamed in two weeks since the last time I streamed this game. But uh, yeah, we've all been kind of busy. Last week I missed... Uh... Yeah, we had a little bit of a crazy St. Patrick's Day, I think. I think that's... Man, it wasn't feeling the best, so I just decided to take an extra day off. What did we do this past weekend? Went to see a soccer game. We got the dub. Um, so I can think. We started watching the Three Body Problem. I have. Uh, I haven't read the books, but I've. I'm aware of the setting. I've. There's this YouTuber Quinn's Ideas, Quinn something or other, who uh, talks about different sci-fi stuff and. I've listened to his videos for a while now, so it's been interesting. We're like four or five episodes in. We haven't finished the season, but uh, I'm yeah interested in seeing where it goes. It's been pretty good so far. Um, but yeah, let's uh, continue with our story. We're gonna skip him, I think. Hide and seek is for dummies, and we're not a dummy. <clears throat> oh, you're up early. Yeah, I told you. Got to, got work to do. I uh, stretch. That's admirable. Reminds me of that one quote you always used to throw around. A lot of people say you can't make smoke dope. <laughs> you can't smoke dope and get drunk when you got kids, and that's not true. You can, but you still got to get up in the morning. That's being responsible. Scruffy! Hello, bud. Uh, that's the one. I, I never understood why it was so hilarious to you. Neither did I. I just accepted the mystery and made it my personal credo. I'm a responsible person. Are you planning to have kids? Not in a million years. By the way, you've got mail. An envelope by the door. It's from Kadir. Inside is a message saying he won't be able to make it tonight, but we'll rendezvous tomorrow to meet D'Angelo. He wants me to lay low until then and stay in his apartment if possible. Apparently nobody knows where Tamika is. They only know sh she's in trouble and he doesn't want me near it. Wow, I cannot read today. Well, what is it? I hope this. Uh, looks like I need to hit the town. Next lead, probably useless, but the investigation continues. It would be fun to spend some more time together, you know. Dakota, you know this is important to me. I know, I know, but I'd like to know I'm important to you as well. That makes two of us. Just a few more days, I'll find the killer, kick his ass, get a promotion, and we'll do something we've never done before. I'm like, what? Good question. I'll, uh, I'll think of something. For now, I'll catch up with your work. I need to get going. Signed, good luck, stay safe. You know it. This place is weirdly empty tonight. Uh, well. Out of the usual. I feel there's a big, what are we doing in this relationship talk coming if I don't change my ways? Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that hasn't already happened. But most of the time, Dakota has seemed happy enough just listening to the stories of my own life. Even if it's all boring and normal to me, it's exotic and engrossing to her. I guess I have that going for me. Oh well. I have no idea what to do tonight, so I'll just do the obvious thing and wing it. These vagabond shoes are long and astray, right through the very heart of it, or however it went. Time to lose myself in these busy streets and pray that the answers I'm looking for are out there. And if they're not, maybe I'll at least find some amusement or blood instead. Camera shyness. Prince of Cats. Prince of Cats. This just sounds like more fun. There it is, the distinct vibe of Manhattan's residential area.
and an unmistakable scent of casserole enveloping the surrounding in a heavenly aura. The atmosphere of desolation, yeah, desolation makes it feel more like purgatory, though. There's not a single soul in sight, and... Ugh, crap. Looks like I'm not alone after all. Some guy exerts himself climbing a nearby tree. I instinctively take a step into the shadows to remain. Outside is on a sight, but I can barely see anything from where I stand. This is where we are. Uh, homie's just climbing a tree in the city like that? Should I call him out or move closer? I'm not going to stay low. I'm not hiding. This is some weird <laughs> activity going on. I don't want to make myself known. I'll move closer. My inner voyeur is squirming for more details. I move a few steps closer, keeping to the shadows. For a good while, all I can hear is heavy panting. Come on, dude. This oak isn't even that tall. Sure looks like it's the first time the guy ever tried climbing a tree. It takes a long time for the mysterious trespasser to study his breath and carry on. As soon as he crawls out of the tree's crown, the dim street lights reveal the face of a young guy in his early 20s. Against the spectacular night sky, and with his exaggeratedly tormented romantic gaze, he truly looks like a hero befitting the cover of Har Harlequin Paperback. He sizes up one of the longer branches. It seems sturdy enough, and nearly reaches a narrow window on the second floor. Still, the guy is hesitant. Alright, no biggie, just eyes on the prize. He moves a few steps along the branch, his feet slipping every other step on his way to the window. With some inexplicable fluke, he manages to keep his balance. Once he makes it far enough, the branch slowly bends under his weight. He kneels down, probably calculating his chances to make it over the win windowsill. My god, if you pull this off, it'll be a legit miracle. What? Is somebody there? Oh shit. Should have been more careful. The trespasser pivots rapidly, startled by the sound of my voice. Just as he notices me, he loses his footing and dives straight into the front yard to the nearest house. Oh shit. He drops to the ground with a muffled thump, luckily for him. The lawn hasn't been trimmed for a while, and the tall grass cushions his landing. Somewhat. As soon as he recovers, the guy gets up and starts limping toward the fence. He tries to climb over, but quickly ends up back on the ground, clutching his leg in pain. He turns to me and starts begging under his nose. Hey, you. Ow. Shit. Please. I'm hurt. Do me a solid and open the gate. Well, with this ankle twisted, he's not going to get out of the mess on his own. And it's not like I'm particularly law-abiding. Definitely not going to use my abilities in front of him. Wait, ah, oh, but that's the only way I can help him. This is, I can, I either leave him, call the residents and let, I, I kind of want to help him though. Fuck it. So why shouldn't I help him? Just stay where you are, don't move. I don't know how to. And shut the fuck up. Relax. I got this. In two swift, bouncy steps, I reach the front gate. Obviously, it's locked, but it's not like that ever stopped me before. Once I'm sure no one can see me, I focus my strength on the gate and pry until the quiet crack announces that the lock is given in. The extraction goes as smoothly as it ever could. I get in quickly, take the guy by his arm, and help him slowly limp out of the front yard. I let go of him a few steps later. He leans against the fence with a noticeable relief. Ouch, thanks man, I really appreciate it. The hell were you doing up there? Well, this is embarrassing. More than falling on your ass like that? He chuckles lightly and looks up at the window. The same one he was trying to reach a few moments ago. This is gonna sound pathetic as hell, but... My crush lives in this house. Her shithead father kinda hates my guts. So we get together in secret. Because of her folks and agging, she can't seem to make up her mind about us. She explicitly told me not to swing by her house, but... but you thought it was a good idea to climb up the walls of her keep like a goddamn Prince Charming and break your neck in her front yard. My remark really gets to him. Yeah, well what can I do? Give up on her? When in my heart of hearts, I know she loves me just as much as I love her. It ain't easy being this cheesy. She's got you good, huh? That she does. Well...
Hell yeah. We're going to fuck with him. Tough shit, pal. Think fast. <laughs> I pick up a round pebble and toss it out the window in a few seconds. It opens with a creak of a wooden frame, followed by a muffled but undeniably happy voice of the resident. Prince? What are you doing down here? I told you... Uh, babe, I have something important to tell you. Can we talk for a moment? She hesitates for a second but quickly jumps back into her room. Break a leg, lover boy. Maybe not literally this time. He nods at me with gratitude while frantically dusting his jacket off, readying himself for the surprise rendezvous. I give him a casual salute and leave. As I walk away, I just hear smooching coming from the front yard. It makes me smile, if only a little. My peeping eye scores another victory. What a cute story. Heartwarming, nostalgic. It's just too bad. It's too cliche to steal from my writing. What? You don't write anymore. Yeah, but it's not like... Wait, what's... Is this just her inner thoughts now? Yeah, but it's not like you can simply stop thinking like a writer. Eh, get to use that energy elsewhere somehow. But for now, let's just start heading downtown. All of a sudden, the world ends. Everything stops. I'm lost in darkness. And there's not even a heartbeat to guide me. It's like sleep paralysis, except it feels as if I suddenly woke up from reality instead of a dream. Instinctively, I react the same way. I used to react whenever I woke up in the middle of the night, aware but not able to move or speak. I just wait for it to pass. But instead of slowly regaining control, I just see a bizarre room emerge from the darkness. Just look at her, flesh refusing its fate. It is, 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 it is. It is not the one you are looking for, is it? He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. There is none righteous, not even one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become useless. If anyone curses his father or mother, he must be put to death. Raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame. Wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And in those days shall we, see, shall we men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Whenever I become one with the darkness, there is always this nagging fear that it might be impossible to become the normal me again. That instead of the shadows returning to normal, I will let my consciousness be dragged somewhere else, somewhere between the worlds. Somewhere like this, wherever this is. This is the first time that fear has come true. Are you afraid? It's a bad idea to answer, don't do it. Yes. Aha! <laughs> excellent. 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 I think I need to sit in this chair. I think? I need to sit in? this chair sit in this chair sit in this chair sit in this chair option number one sit in this chair still in the lean years and unworthy of joining the rest however the path is open and it is a path of obligation liability a debt that will be repaid one day and when she asks you what brought you here let your response be a scent of death Suddenly, I feel my mind beginning to drift away from here. I'm slowly starting to regain control over my thoughts. No, you aren't. Yes, I am. Fine. Think whatever you want. I find myself in a dark corner, leaning against a wet, cold brick wall. I think I'm conscious again, back from wherever it was, awake, but I'm in an unfamiliar place. Well, let's just hope I'm still in New York City. I emerge from the shadows to see where I am, a source of light above me, and my head momentarily blinds me, causing me to instinctively raise my hand. As I do, I hit some sort of garbage bag with my hand. It falls to the floor, letting loose a metallic din. What the fuck? A woman. I feel her hand grabbing my clothes. She brutally drags me closer. With one of my hands already above my head, I raise the other. Easy, peace, I mean you no harm. How long have you been here? I don't know. I've got no idea what I'm doing here, or in general, really. It's like sometimes the forces I control figure out how to control me. 
What are you, a junkie? No. You're kindred. Yeah. Keep your shit together, damn it. I'm Julius Vinsky, the representative of the Sombra in New York City. Camarilla? Uh huh, I'm a Camarilla investigator. Well, if you came here to catch me, you're gonna be sorry you tried, Miss LaSombra. No, 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 stop right here. I wasn't ordered to catch anybody. I'm just investigating Douglas Callahan's death. This surprises her. She loosens her grip slightly. Callahan is dead? Nothing left but a rotten carcass and a musty robe. Well, I'll be damned. I've been off the grid for too long. What brought you here? A memory from a different world pops up in my head. Yeah... I think I know the right answer. A scent of death. She lets me go. I rub my eyes and finally get a good look at her face. She's gorgeous and judging by her nomadic clothes and particularly fierce aura, she's probably an outlander. What is that? El Clan Gangrel. It was made of those who have fallen through the cracks of society. They call the cruelest neighborhoods home and they consider this a point of pride they hold few domains and follow no prince this clan embraces from the ranks of those who have already spilled blood and had their blood spilled who have survived the harshest conditions who have fought against horrible odds and still came out on top prison gang leaders vagrants and any other keen who has seen the darkest sides of the world occasionally i'm told you'll see who breaks this mold and pursues knowledge or influence instead among the gang, girl respect is everything and is always earned, never given. Commonly referred to as wolves, ferals, and outcasts. Or if you want to piss them off, animals, strays, or savages. Alright. We'll have a talk, you and I. Sure. What's your name? To me Wait, I'm pretty sure this is the same girl from Coteries. Tamika? Nice. Pass me a smoke, will ya? If only it could hit. <clears throat> if only it, it could. My heart would skip a beat right now. Tamika, I guess once again, someone out there led me to the proper path. Uh, yeah, sure. When I pass her a cigarette, I realize I'm sitting in something wet. Something that smells tasty. I take a look at my feet and see a puddle of water mixed with blood. Oh, I get it. Were these guys first light? The high-powered guns and expensive-looking outfits, flashbangs, tasers, all chosen specifically to combat the undead. I recognize that equipment from some horror stories I've read. First light? See... Usokam? Whatever they call themselves. They all bleed out the same usually before I have the chance to ask them a single question. Yeah, spoilers, but in Coteries... If you do her, there's a, there's a bunch of different people you can talk to, but I have focused on like two or three and she was one of them. And I, you take out some, uh, inquisition people with her, I believe. Yeah. So this, uh, this tracks that she's a badass. Government funded inquis- yep. Some claim they're connected to the U.S. government. Some claim they're supported by the anti-kindred faction in the Holy See. Some have even wilder theories. You did this all by yourself? Have you seriously seen nothing? Nothing at all? I shake my head. Believe it or not, I have no idea how I got here. I just kind of let the shadows guide me. Is that a somber thing? I've never actually talked to any of you. No idea what you guys can actually do. Still learning the ropes myself. Go with the flow and all that. My embrace was just a few months ago. Huh. So you folks are with the Ivory Tower now. Unless I checked you were with the Sabbat. The Camus wouldn't forgive all the trouble you've caused them overnight. Which we already know what Sabbat is. I'm surprised that came back up. The extremist sect that fully enjoys the predatory tendencies and doesn't think highly of mortals are also believed to be embroiled in be bringing about the eschatological vampire-on-vampire -vampire conflict known as the Gehenna War. They were driven away from the West over the last few decades. I've heard that New York City used to be Sabbat-controlled until 1999. The Sombra of my clan used to be the thinkers behind these wackos. Believe since thrown our lot in with the Camarilla. Again, I'm practically still a neonate. That's just like a young vampire, I'm pretty sure. 
Uh, I just know there's a lot of bad blood between my clan and the others, and that I can expect at least one glare of pure contempt whenever I visit Elysium. Ha, huh, I see. We smoke in silence for a short while. Yeah, you haven't answered my question. Did You did this all by yourself? Yeah, I've been hunting these guys for the past few months. Aren't they extremely dangerous? Almost got me for good last year. It took me a few weeks to get back into action. Then why are you doing this? Those motherfuckers have an unfortunate tendency to hurt people I care about. My brothers, my sisters. Yeah, I remember her having a family. I see. I don't know how it is in the other cities, but here, funny enough, they only seem to target marginalized and radicalized kindred, ones that could theoretically pose a threat to the current order. Meanwhile, the establishment in New York City hasn't really changed ever since Kellebros stepped down. Quite the opposite. Every SI raid in this city has only strengthened the old paradigm. Almost makes you think that their goal is something other than protecting the citizens from the blank body menace. Tamika throws her cigarette into the puddle unfinished and crushes it under her heel. She obviously had difficulty smoking. It's like she's only ever tried it a few times. I assume she saw me carrying a pack and decided to try to calm her nerves after the battle. Maybe she just wanted an excuse to make our conversation less awkward. Who knows? So, are you planning to snitch on me, Shadow Girl? And why would I do that? Let me get this straight. You really think I'm dumb enough to believe, for one second, that a Camarillo investigator would just so happen to stumble upon the alley where I just killed a bunch of SI motherfuckers? If so, you're the one who's dumb, sister. I don't care if you think I'm dumb. I don't care about Osai. And I don't care if you believe it was a happy accident. I met you. Especially considering not even the sheriff knows where you are. But I care about solving the mystery of Callahan's death. And as it happens, you're one of the pieces of the puzzle. What? What are you talking about? I found this on his body. Well, what remained of it? I show her the note. She tries to grab it to read it, but I don't let her. Aside from your name, we've got Hope. Wait. D'Ange- Wait. Are all these guys from Coteries? I think they are. I completely forgot. Okay, Hope, Agathon, and D'Angelo, you know them? I think I remember being close with D'Angelo and Coteries too. Uh, passingly. Any idea why Callahan would need a list of all your names? I might know why, yeah. Do you? Absolutely. Do you know a man going by the name of Torque? Huh? Of course I do. Do you know about his connection to Boss Callahan and by proxy to this list and me? No, I'm all ears. Well, too bad, because it's classified intel, sister. <laughs> what do you mean by classified? Not free. Oh, great. As if I were in the position to or could afford any sort of quid pro quo. Fine, let's hear it. What do you want? She motions towards the bodies. Killed too many of these assholes are tightening the screws. As it is, New York City is no longer safe for someone like me. Well, not that it ever was. Oh man, bracing for something unreasonable. What I need is a way out of the city. You offer that to me? I give you the intel you need. Huh, would you look at that? I... that's something I can handle actually, yeah. She raises her eyebrows. That's a surprisingly confident answer for a practically still in neonate. Something of an immigration officer. Shh. Gotta say, you sound awfully close to a cop. Almost as bad a bureaucrat. You have a secret pathway that would lead you to the West Coast. 100% safe travel. And if you took it, you'd be untraceable. It sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? Wait until you see how much it costs. The only reason I know of this route is because a certain... Nazi criminal group reached out to me on account of my position and offered a mutually beneficial deal regarding illegal kindred travel. What is this? I've never heard of this. Ah, Nosferatu, yeah, yeah. The Clan of the Hidden. Ah, I'm a little sad they're not in the second bloodlines. Although, a good Nosferatu game would be hard. It would be a complete, like, stealth game because if somebody saw you, you would just literally... Yeah, ruin everything. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think I like their uh, 
their flaw and their perks. No spot is very cool. Normally I'd refuse, but they offered me the only thing that, he, that can buy me. A lot of cash. Ah, uh, fine. Then money is not an issue. Now that's something I never heard, had a chance to ever say in earnest. Okay then. Okay, so who helps who first? You should assist me first. Guess you want me to help you out first. How can I get her out of the city first? She definitely has to help me first. You should assist me first and then we'll figure out how to transfer you out of the city. Hmm. Hell no. Is this really the extent of your negotiation skills? Why would you think this kind of line would work? Because I can't get you out of the city, then how are you going to tell me? I didn't. I just don't think either of us trust the other enough to afford the benefit of the doubt. It's an impasse. But it's true. Let me think. She's lost in her thoughts for a moment, then speaks up. Have you met Torque before? In the course of your investigation or before? I wanted to, but on the Anarch side I only managed to me meet Mia. She wasn't keen on the idea of the two of us meeting. Ah, uh, yes, Mia. Her expression betrays she's got some vicious stories to tell, but it would be beneath her to divulge some. Too bad. Maybe it could be a bonding experience. So here's the thing. A few months ago, Torque and I were together. A lot of things happened. Long story short, I no longer feel close to him, but from what I know, he still feels close to me. Back when I thought there might be something between us, I gave him a ring that has a lot of sentimental value to me. Since these days, sentiment, sentimentality, sentimentality, that is, there it is, is all that keeps me going. I want it back. So my suggestion is, tell Torx people I sent you to get inside his base of operations, meet up with him, ask him your questions, and convince him to give my ring back. You get to interrogate him, then I get to have my ring back. Then you hear my side of the story, then I get to leave the city with your help. Everybody wins, more than once. They'll really let me in just because I tell them you sent me? They will, trust me. Sounds too easy. What caused the two of you to drift apart? Reconcilable differences in worldview. Well, I assume so, but that's a diplomatic answer. I'm going to involve myself in the relationship drama of two ex-lovers. I'll need something more to go on. Will you? Yeah. She picks her words carefully. I realize I'd become an element of his carefully crafted, projected image. Having me as a radical partner allowed him to present himself as a mediator while paying lip service to revolutionary ideas. A mediator. That's the 21st century for you. Everyone wants to be a middleman these days, and nobody wants to do what's right. You serious? Whenever I hear about Torque from the Ancilla, they talk about him like he's the second coming of Mao. Have you ever seemed like that? It's only because from time to time people like me pushed him into doing an uneasy thing. Ever to the Southern Wolf and the Northern Fox? Both of them want to eat for dinner, but only the Southern Wolf makes it immediately obvious. The tricky Northern Fox makes eyes and allows you to pet him before taking a bite. Torque loves to surround himself with northern foxes. They talk of compromises. They seem reasonable compared to the opposition, but they, at the end of the day, they have eyes on the same prize, power. And this gives me a foreboding feeling, but I can't quite nail down why. I like that. I haven't heard that. The, the wolf and the fox. Alright, tell me where to go, and I'll tell you where we'll meet later. I'm just chilling at Torque's when suddenly a shrill, loud voice piercing my eardrums. And what the hell are you doing here? Oh, yeah, it's the pissy lady from Torque's Inner Circles. <laughs> None of your damn business, I'd say. It's absolutely my business. You're on my boss's turf. I'm responsible for his security. I can't have you here. I'd say you're doing a piss poor job, then. I'd say you're in for a beating. I thought you'd be more open to cooperation after our last talk. Not when you're trying to make deals behind my back, bitch. Mia, Mia, it's okay. There he is, walking through the door, one of the most infamous New York City barons. Some people started calling him the moment Callahan met his M, the Baron of New York City. Dork, we've talked about this. She, the situation is a little bit different now. Tamika Center. What? Bullshit, I wasn't able to track her down for weeks. Well, I did. This is a reason to celebrate, not get mad, now. 
you allowed the two of us a private conversation? No way. I want to keep an eye on her. You will keep an eye on the exit and that will be enough, please. He puts on his best authoritative tone and it works. No protest this time. Mia leaves the room. When talking to Mia, you mentioned cooperation. First, I've heard about it. Try to make friends with her so that the investigation would go more smoothly. Looks like it wasn't appreciated. I'm sorry about her. She can be overzealous, but usually that's not a bad thing. Yeah, sure. So she told you I've been trying to reach you for a few nights? I don't think so, have you? Well, I'm the dumbass to court order to investigate Callahan's final death. So considering your connection to the case, thought it would be prudent for us to talk. Ah, so that's you. Yeah, now I know you're probably anxious to hear about Tamika. I'm surprised to hear you two know each other. We actually met through this investigation. Anyway, as I was saying, I know you probably can't wait to hear about her, but I'd like to ask you a few questions first. I understand. Do your job. Do you know Douglas Callahan? Of course I did. We were both barons. Kept having professional obligations to meet each other, but that was it. What was your private opinion of him? Same as everyone else's, a racist clown mentally stuck in the 19th century. We spent too much time keeping the Anarchs down. I'm glad he's gone. You mean you're glad he met Final Death? Well, you know what they say. I hate to see you go. Love to watch you leave. Weren't you the first kindred who saw his corpse? I was, but it was his ghouls who found him. By the way, we've established that some of them tampered with the crime scene. They were properly disciplined for that. Convenient story. Let's move on. What's your alibi for that night? None. I was running around the town the entire night, taking care of various issues unrelated to Callahan, but I don't intend to divulge them to someone from the Ivory Tower. So you have no interest in proving yourself innocent. My official position was made clear. That's the Camarilla who are to blame. It's your job to prove me wrong. Cool, i At least for once, can I face a problem that can be solved with pure logic, not politics? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> There's got to be a swear in some other language. Uh, any findings on your side I should know of? Ask Mia. She's the one who handled the murder scene. I'm not privy to all the details. Hope, D'Angelo, Agathon... Any idea who those people are? Can't recall, sorry. The evidence I found suggests a potential link between Callahan and Tamika. Any clue? I knew both of them well, but as far as I know, they've never met. That's it. Oh, well, not sure what I expected. He's the kind of guy that could only be pushed to talk if I had something concrete to push him with. Time to move on. Well, regarding Tamika, finally. I'll cut straight to the chase. She wanted to inform you she will be skipping town for a while. The SI is hot on her trail, and she needs to lose them ASAP. Oh, for it. I've told her countless times, as, as she's in danger, I will always be there for her. Does she think she can find a secure way out of the city in this situation? She's safe. So you say. She's got some other friends in high places. She'll manage to get out. Gotta admit, that's not what I expected to hear, or what I wanted to hear. Why does she decide to contact me? She wants her ring back. His aura changes in the blink of an eye. Ah. Uh, I see now. So that's why she didn't show up herself. Wouldn't even face me when delivering the final insult. Uh oh. Looks like I stepped on a landmine. She said the ring was a symbol of the trust she put in me. No way in hell I'm going to give it away. Not until she gives me the chance to explain myself. I need that ring to get Tamika to talk. But with the way he's acting. It doesn't seem likely he'd be willing to part with it might require me to act shitty, but maybe time to change my approach. Ah! Ah, man, no way. No way I can just be like, oh, actually. That's, uh, be brutally honest. Fuck it, here we go. Listen, you're obviously the hottest new thing in town. People like you. People follow you. You're said to be the anarch people think of when they think of New York City. Good for you. But you're obviously way behind when it comes to understanding relationships. Tamika gave it a serious try. She understood her path. She understood yours. She realized they're diametrically opposed. And that's that. You're not going to change her mind by acting like a toxic shithead and forcing her to come grovel at your feet. If she wants to get back something that was, has a great sentimental value to her. 
You don't have to hurt her chest again. Don't act like a power tripping asshole. Show her you're capable of responding to her concerns. That you're capable of being selfless. That's the only thing you can do to change your mind. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm done. Aw, oh, fuck me in my big mouth. Ugh. He approaches the door and throws it wide open. Mia! Yes, boss? We're done here. Lead the lady out as quickly as possible. Yes, boss. Fuck! I have a lot of things I'd say to describe his behavior, but I don't want to cause the diplomatic incident. No need. I'm going. Thank you for your time. Tell her I'll show her she's wrong. Tell her I'll prove myself worthy of that ring. If it's the last thing I do. Whatever. I let myself be let out to the, of the building by Mia. Another mission failed. Time to meet Tamika and tell her the bad news. I find her already waiting in front of the Jewish museum. How'd it go? Let me put it this way. I'm not surprised you dumped him. So you did not succeed. Nah, he got mad and started yelling about how he will prove himself to be worthy of that gift. Then he ran me out of the building. Ah, she try is she trying to stop herself from laughing? What's so funny? Nothing. I'll be honest, I kind of expected that. It's just nice to get a definite confirmation. So a bit of a toxic asshole, that's all. Well, glad I fell for the oldest trick of the book. It'd be cool if, for once, a kindred telling me to do one thing didn't mean another thing entirely. Oh, don't be mad. I wanted to be sure of something, and now I am. As far as I'm concerned, you've kept your end of the bargain. It's time I repay the favor. Last year, a certain fledgling appeared in the city and attempted to build a coterie. That list you found on Callahan? That's the list they've got. They contacted each of us. They found themselves in deep shit. SI, Kaiser, Sophie, Langley. Some shadow players manipulating everything from behind the scenes. Then they disappeared. Sophie Langley. I think she... Yeah, yeah. Kaiser. Yeah, it's all coming back to me. Kaiser. The name popping up once again. It can't be a coincidence. No one knows where or why. It doesn't really matter. That happens when you punch away above your weight. Hope they're doing fine despite all odds. In any case, Tork got involved too. So I met him, actually. He got hurt. Didn't want to say how. Claimed it could put anyone who knew in danger. Whatever happened, it gave him the drive and desire t for change. For two months, he, he was a beautiful kindred, plain and simple. But suddenly something in him snapped overnight. His tone mellowed out, his actions became timid. His language became more befitting of a political science student than a charismatic leader. I assumed he met someone who made him an offer he couldn't refuse, but I had no idea who that was. And then one night, I followed him when he went out, and I saw him scheming at the docks with Callahan. When he came back, we had an argument. When he refused to explain himself, I knew I was, I was on my way out. And that was that. I understand. Wish I'd known that earlier. Might have confronted the facts with him and learned something more. He never told me of all kindred. What makes you think he would have told you? Just got a point, I suppose. Alright. Thank you. Now it's my turn. Here's your way out. I point at the manhole below our feet. Here's a map of the sewers. Follow the route. Then burn it. You'll be looking for a one-eyed nose frost who wearing tactical gear. Tell him I sent you, then give him the agreed upon amount of money. What kind of route will I be taking anyway? An armored van full of precious coffins. My man knows how to arrange them to, to allow for unnoticed extra cargo. Her face darkens. The circulatory system? What did you expect? The rich and powerful always get the blood they want, one way or another. At least tonight, one of their outs will be used for something good. She drops her shoulders in resignation and opens up the manhole cover. Fine. But remember, if it doesn't work, I'll be back at your doorstep with a vengeance if it's the last thing I do. I'm sure it'll work out fine. Just be aware of a giant albino ghoul alligator while you're down there. Tamika rolls her eyes. Sewer ghoul alligator. For your information, it's just a store New York injured tell to neonates to mess with them while well, they're still gullible enough to believe anything they hear about their new world. Well, that makes sense, I suppose. Well, this is goodbye. If in a few months you hear that the first light presence in L.A. has been decimated, assume that, against all odds, I'm still unalive and kicking. If you keep killing indiscriminately, you might cross a line of no return, you know. 
Shouldn't you take it easy for a while? Not until my brothers and sisters in blood stop being slaughtered. I care about what's left of my humanity, but turning a blind eye on kindred in need would be even less human. So that's the kind of person she is, and probably will be until the very end. It must be comforting, in a way, to know how your path will end, yet to follow it all the same. I could never do that. Here's some parting advice for you. We might be monsters, but we were lucky enough to be born into a world that's even more monstrous than we are. If we rebel against it, we might still find salvation. If only I could believe it. Didn't expect the preaching tone. Why are you telling me this? Because I think I have a pretty good nose for people's auras, and when I take a good look at you, I smell a penchant for ruthless op opportunism. I smell the possibility that you'll give in to the fear of the dark visions of the f future you've conjured in your head. It's not much, just a hunch. But you seem prone to giving in to the Camarillo's empty promises of safety and their petite bourgeois values. I think I should take offense to that. <laughs> now if you do, they would reflect on you as well. That would reflect on you well. In any case, whatever happens, see you in your next life, Julia. Safe travels, Danica. I skipped tonight's visit to the church. Not in the mood to see Benoit. I'm so embarrassed about yesterday's outburst. I'm kind of pissed none of the clan elders in Chicago bothered to reply to any of my frickin' reports. No advice, no feedback, nothing. I feel like I was left utterly alone. Besides, it's late. I always get back to the apartment early in the morning, right before it gets bright. It's getting risky to be out here so close to sunrise. Accidents can happen. I'll try to get back earlier tomorrow night. Attempt to surprise Dakota, yeah? I'm back. Yay. <laughs> that was work. All caught up? Eh, I managed to get my deadlines postponed. All our clients are still canceling and delaying orders left and right. Hmm. Does that mean you'll have time to help me with my makeup tomorrow? We'll see. Perfect. Alright, I need to disappear before the sun catches up with me. Hey. Yeah? I love you. Oh. No easy silence fills the room. I'm not getting out of this at 1, am I? No, I have to. I didn't lie to the Baron of New York City tonight, so I'm not going to lie to her. I know. She flashes a sad, forced smile as I leave to rest. Ooh, fuck. <laughs> mm. Um. Okay, we'll we'll do this, and uh, no, we need a rest. Well, I could not possibly do another full day. I think I'm gonna do each stream day by day. So that that was a quick one. Um. But yeah, we'll uh, do the next day next week. Keeping these ones short. Um, if I got some friends getting on Helldiver soon, I might get back on and stream later tonight. But uh, if they're not going to get on until late. Uh, well, I'll probably just catch you guys next week. Um... Yeah, we, uh, people go through some things, uh, streams are going to be inconsistent for a little bit, I believe, um, but I will be streaming next Monday, so you can catch me then, did I do the right thing? I did, good. Much love, hope you guys have a great rest of your week, uh, yeah, see you later, bye Scruffy. <laughs>